Homeostasis. How do you keep comfortable? Homeostasis or control of internal conditions is essential to any organism's survival. All body systems work together to maintain homeostasis. Wildebeest brain cells, like those of humans, must be kept at a stable temperature and supplied with a steady stream of glucose for energy. The brain cells must also be bathed in a fluid with a constant concentration of water and be cleansed of metabolic waste products. Failure of homeostasis, even for a few minutes, could lead to permanent brain injury or death. These systems are interconnected and work together to maintain homeostasis. Digestive, respiratory, circulatory, excretory, which is waste expulsion, including sweat, nervous, muscular, and skeletal systems. In most animals, respiratory and digestive systems would be useless without circulatory systems to distribute oxygen and nutrients and remove waste. Similarly, the excretory system needs a circulatory system to collect carbon dioxide and nitrogenous waste from body tissue and deliver them to the lungs and excretory organs. Muscles wouldn't work without a nervous system to direct them and a skeletal system to support them. Muscular system, skeletal system, circulatory system, digestive system, respiratory system, and nervous system. And one more could be added, the waste excretory system, including sweat glands. Most environments contain disease-causing microorganisms or pathogens that may take advantage of steady supply of oxygen and nutrients found within an animal's body. If pathogens enter a body and grow, they may disrupt homeostasis in ways that cause disease. Most animals have an immune system that can distinguish between self and others. Once the immune system discovers others in the body, it attacks the invaders and works to restore homeostasis. Vertebrates, along with anthropods and many other invertebrates, regulate many body processes using a system of chemical controls. Endocrine glands regulate body activity by releasing hormones into the blood where they are carried to the organs whose activities they regulate. Mammals, like other vertebrates, have endocrine glands that are part of an endocrine system. Some hormones control the way the body stores or mobilizes energy. Other hormones regulate the amount of water in a body and the amount of calcium in bones. This is a bear before hibernation. And this is the bear after hibernation. So how do you keep cool? Most reptiles, invertebrates, fishes, and amphibians are ectotherms that regulate body temperature primarily by absorbing heat from or losing heat to their environment. Endotherms such as birds and mammals have high metabolic rates that generate heat even when they are resting. So the snake is an ectotherm and the bird is an endotherm. So an ectotherm primarily receives their heat from outside and an endotherm produces heat from the inside and it has an insulative layer to keep it. Control of body temperature is important for maintaining homeostasis, particularly in areas where temperature varies widely with time of day or with season. Many body functions are influenced by temperature. For example, the muscles cannot operate if they are too cold or too hot. Body temperature control requires three components, a source of heat, a way to conserve heat when necessary, a method of eliminating excess heat when necessary. An animal may be described as an ectotherm or an endotherm based on the structures and behaviors that enable it to control its body temperature. Most reptiles, invertebrates, fishes, and amphibians are ectotherms, animals that regulate body temperature primarily by absorbing heat from or losing heat to their environment. The regulation of a lizard's body temperature depends mostly on its relationship to sources of heat outside its body. One way a lizard can regulate its body temperature is by stilting. 
raising its body off the hot sand by performing a sort of push-up. Ectotherms have relatively low metabolic rates when resting, so their bodies don't generate much heat. Their muscles generate heat when active, but since most ectotherms lack, lack effective body insulation, their body heat is easily lost to the environment. Ectotherms warm up by basking in the sun and often use underground burrows where there are fewer temperature extremes. An endotherm is an animal whose body temperature is regulated, at least in part, using heat generated by its body. Endotherms, such as birds or mammals, have high metabolic rates that generate heat even when they are resting. Birds conserve heat primarily with insulating feathers, such as fluffy down. Mammals use a combination of body fat and hair for insulation. Some birds and most mammals can get rid of excess heat by panting. Panting allows air to evaporate some of the moisture in the blood vessel rich mouth and respiratory tract, cooling the blood. Humans sweat to help reduce their body temperature. As sweat evaporates, it removes heat from the skin and then the blood of the capillaries just under the surface of the skin cools. This way, as warm blood flows through the cooled capillaries, it loses heat. Ectothermy and endothermy each have advantages and disadvantages in different situations. Ectotherms need much less food than similar size endotherms need. In consistently warm environments, ectothermy is more energy efficient. Large ectotherms run into trouble, however, if temperatures get very cold at night or stay cold for long periods. A large animal takes a long time to warm up in the sun after a cold night. Endotherms survive more easily in, during cold nights or in cold weather because they generate and conserve body heat. But the high metabolic rate that generates this heat requires a lot of fuel. <laughs>